Hello dear learners. Today I welcome you for lesson 5 of chapter 1 that is measurement. Here is the contact information. If you face any difficulty regarding this lesson, you can contact me. Learning outcomes of today's lesson are that you should be able to describe how to measure a short period of time with appropriate accuracy. You should be able to explain how to measure time using appropriate instruments. Here are the contents which we are going to cover in today's lesson. Measurement of time in old days, measurement of time using pendulum, instruments used to measure time, and in the last you will be having practice questions. Measurement of time. How do we measure time in old days? Suppose you do not have a watch or a mobile phone, then how would you be able to tell time? This is a question that how would you be able to tell time if you are not having any watch or mobile phone? We can tell time by observing natural events that repeat at regular intervals or periods. So, we will see some of the common examples here related to natural events which people were following in old days to measure time. So here is the example that is sunsets. In old days, people were considering this event, this natural event for observing that what time is occurring what the time is. So, because the sun sets each day. Obviously, we, have, we know this, that the sun sets each day. And the sun rises each day also. A day can be divided into 24 hours. So, in old days, some of the people considered that the sun sets and when in next day, the sun will set, the people say that 24 hours has been passed. Or sometimes people say that one day is completed. Some of the people consider that the sun rises and next day when the sun rises, they say that one day is completed or you can say that 24 hours has been passed. Because Sunsets is a, is, is a periodic natural event. It repeats daily. The thing which repeats, it is known as regular interval or a periodic motion, you can see. Second is motion of the sun, positions of the sun, positions of the sun. In old days, a sundial was used to tell the time of the day. That what the time is. So some of the people were using sundial. The position of the shadow cast by the sun differs. Means to say the shadow which is caused by the sun, it differs according to the time of the day. So by considering the shadow, people were assuming that what the time is of the day. So, if you see here one example of sundial, you can see that sun is here at this position. And here you have a dial and the shadow is caused here. Shadow showing the time. You can see this label that shadow is showing you the time. And time, if you see here on the scale, it is 3, 3 p.m. It will not be 3 a.m. because in evening or at day or sorry at night time we will not be having the sun. So it is 3 p.m. So from the morning till the evening we can use this sun dial to tell the time of the day. The third which is also commonly used natural event to tell or to measure the time is seasons. 
we have four seasons spring summer autumn and winter and they come once a year suppose in old days people is people are considering that it is summer it is summer nowadays and after some time when the next summer will come it means that one year has passed similarly some of the people consider winter that nowadays winter is going on when next winter will come it means one year has passed so to measure time in years at that time people were using seasons for the measurement of time phases of moon phases of the moon the shape of the moon changes almost everyone have seen that the shape of the moon changes from a full moon to a crescent and back to a full moon again this shows that a month has passed if you see here in a picture here is a full moon and the cycle is going somehow like this the shape of the moon is changing you can see there are some phases full moon then waning gibbous third quarter waning crescent new moon then waxing crescent first quarter waxing gibbous and then again full moon when this cycle completes it means that one month has passed so now we will see si unit for time the si unit for time is second there are other units also like minute or day month and year they are also used for measuring time and in previous slide we have seen that in old days how people were using natural events to measure the time in year in months and in the form of day and in the form of hours so here we basically dis want to see, discuss this thing that si unit for time is second but how we will measure the time in seconds or if we want to measure the time for very short interval very short interval then what we do so we have some instruments in nowadays that are clock stopwatch and we have some uh, cell phones we have this uh, uh, you can say mobile phones laptops systems in which we have a clock so we will be using that clock stopwatch cell phones for scientific work these instruments are basically required for scientific work for scientific work the observation of natural events for time is not accurate because the interval between a sunrise and sunset is different in winter and summer so what the time is going on with the help of natural events it was very difficult to notice this thing that what is the sunrise and sunset time in winter or in summer or you can take one more example if i drop a marker from certain height how much time is taken by the marker to reach the ground from a certain height because that time is very short the interval is very small so it was very difficult to measure these measure these times with the help of natural events so we have some instruments for that so before talking about the instrument of clock we will see that how we can use a pendulum to measure time a simple pendulum consists of a bob attached to a spring in pendulum what happens the one end of the string is attached to some fixed part and the other end of the string is attached to a bob 
if you see this one this picture the one end of the string is attached to the fixed part and the other end of the string is attached to a bob bob is basically a metal ball so in this pendulum we have three things which we have to keep in our mind and they are very important one is oscillation then what is oscillation in pendulum a complete to and fro motion from r to s and back to r is one complete oscillation if you see here this picture we have ball or bob at point r when the bob is released it will move it will have some motion it will reach at point s and after that it will again come back to r this is to and fro motion if you see here it was at point r then it reaches s and then again it come back to r this is known as to and fro motion from r to s and back to r it is known as one complete oscillation or you can say one oscillation and second thing which is very important that is period you can say that it is a time period so what is time period the time period is the time which this uh, motion this bomb has taken from r to s and back to r the time taken by the bob to complete one oscillation one complete revolution one complete oscillation or you can say one complete cycle or one complete vibration that time take is basically your time period for example here we have a bob at point r it is at least it reaches at s and then it come back to r so how much time is taken by this bob to move from r to s and back to r that time is known as time period this time period depends on the length of a pendulum if this length is different time period will be vary so if we want to calculate time period mathematically we must have time taken by the pendulum and number of oscillation made by the pendulum if you are having these two things you can calculate time period if you are having time period and number of oscillations made by the pendulum how much time taken by the pendulum you can calculate this so here are the instruments which are used to measure time pendulum clock pendulum clock somehow works like pendulum all time pieces use some kind of periodic mo motion to tell time when we are talking about periodic motion it means that there is some repetition regular interval repetition in in that interval as we have seen that pendulum clocks keep in pendulum we have seen that it moves to and fro continuously in a periodic way motion so pendulum clocks keep time using pendulum's periodic swing in previous slide we have discussed about the motion to and fro motion that is basically your periodic swing in clocks and stopwatches you have oscillations the oscillations of springs and the natural vibrations of crystals are other periodic motions but nowadays most clocks and watches today use quartz crystal quartz crystals are small accurate and require very little energy if you see here one picture this is basically a quartz crystal in your watches 
block contain small quartz crystal. In this, you have tuning forks which oscillate at known frequencies. In this, you have some tuning forks due to which oscillation occurs and this oscillates at known frequencies. Moreover, we would not use analog watch to measure time in arrays. Now, here you have to think one thing that why we are not using analog watch to measure the time in arrays. Instead of analog watch, we will, we will use a digital stopwatch. While measuring the time by using stopwatch, a manual operation introduces. So due to this manual operation in stopwatch, a random error occurs. So what is manual operation? Basically when the race is going to st start, a person is going to press the button of a stopwatch to measure the time. So that pressing of the button takes some time. And when the race is going to finish, again the person is going to stop the stopwatch. Again, it requires some time to stop that button. So that is manual operation which introduces a random error. And random error is called human reaction time because human is performing some reaction. When it is going to press the button, there is going to occur a human reaction. That human reaction time is basically a random error. And it is about 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 seconds approximately for most people. So here we have question one, practice question. Bigger shows an oscillating pendulum. Here you can see we have marked three points A, B and C. If the time taken for the pendulum to swing, time taken for the pendulum to swing from A to C, A, B, C, and then C to B, C to B is 6 seconds. Time taken by the pendulum is given to you that is 6 seconds. What is the period of the pendulum? Here we have to calculate time period or you can say period of the pendulum. And in previous slides we have seen that time period is equal to time taken for the pendulum divided by number of oscillations. So you have to calculate how many oscillations are going to occur here. So from A to B, it is 1 by 2, you can say 0.5, then from B to C, it is again 0.5, and then C to B, it is again half, you can say 1 by 2 or 0.5. So it will be 3 by 4. Or in other words, you can say it is 0 0.75 into time period is equal to 6 seconds. What I have done here in the denominator, we are having number of oscillations. I have, uh, I did here cross multiplication and I shifted this number of oscillation on this side. So what I do, I am going to perform here some uh, steps. What I am going to do, uh, I am going to multiply this 4 with 6. Cross multiplication is going to occur here and this step will be the next one. So 6 into 4 gives me 24. Again, I will take this 3 on that side. When I divide this, I get time period that is 8 seconds. Instead of 3 by 4, you can write here 0 0.75 also. So, by what we said in previous slide that A to C and then back to A. From C to A, A to C and then C to A, we have one complete oscillation. So, here we have 0 0.75 oscillation because A to C, it is 
0.5 means half oscillation then c to b it is 0.25 oscillation because we are not going to complete the half cycle we are having one by fourth of this so it is 0.75 so in this problem we have time period that is eight seconds in question number two again the figure is given to you if the time taken for the pendulum to swing from a to c and then c to a one oscillation is completed and then again a to c is six seconds so time taken for the pendulum is given to you you have to calculate what is the period of the pendulum this is an exercise for you you have to do this that's it for today's lesson thank you so much if you have not subscribed the channel do it and do not forget to hit the like button